Welcome back, everyone, to The Xamarin Show. I'm your host, James Montemagno, and I'm super excited to have friend of the show and personal friend, Dean Alice, on today, all the way from, are you in the UK? Where are you, good sir? I'm in the UK. I'm in a little town called Bedford. Um, for those of you that don't know England, that's north of London. Oh, okay. That's all you need to know. <laughs> I'll be over there pretty soon. I'm going over to, um, I'm going to fly into the UK. I'm going to go, like, south. Then I'm going to go north into like Scotland or some, somewhere crazy. I'm going to be all over the place for some events, so maybe I'll pop into you. But uh, I'm super excited to have you on because we're talking about gaming. And you know I used, to, I used to be a gamer. I still am a gamer. I just got a Nintendo Switch. Love it. Um, but I used to actually make games on the Xbox 360, uh, which is really awesome. I worked on Xbox Live Arcade uh, titles, and then oh, I wrote well, printer okay. software. Yeah, no one knows this about me, but I actually have a game. And they ported it to <laughs> Xbox One. But this was actually interesting because when I was making games, we were building our own engines from scratch, all in C++. Um, Microsoft didn't release this thing called XNA yet, uh, which came out right after we shipped our game, which was interesting. And you today, Dean, have the pleasure of telling us about Monogame, which I know tons of games have been built with, a whole bunch of awesome stuff. But before we dive into it, can you tell uh, everyone at, uh, here on the Xamarin Show a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm obviously Dean Ellis. I work at Microsoft. Um, I'm part of the Xamarin group. My day job is uh, writing the Android tooling. So I spend my entire day living in MS Build. That's that's all I do all day. It's just ML, MS Build tasks and uh, targets files. That's it. So if, you, if you're building an Android app, um, the chance that you're using my code. So um, I hope you, hope you like it, which is cool. But uh, obviously, I'm not here to talk about my day job. I'm here to talk about my other day job, <laughs> which is what we call it when we work on an open source project. Um, and, that, and that's Monogame, which I've been doing for about f five, six years now, Yeah, so believe it or not. Yeah, can you tell us a little bit about Monogame? So, I mean, to me, I know there's a lot of, um, a lot of developers come to me and they say, you know, I want to, I'm a C-sharp developer. I want to create some games. What can I do? And um, you know, normally developers think that they have to go write a bunch of C++ or um, it's too complicated to get into. Uh, can you kind of give an overview of what Monogame is? Well, Monogame started as um, an open source port of XNA, which you've mentioned before. XNA was this, I, I personally think XNA was the best set of APIs that Microsoft ever released. <laughs> they were good. They, they were awesome. They were they're so easy to use. Um, you know, quick to pick up. They've got, they've got universities in the UK here that actually use XNA and now Monogame to teach students how to code. Mm. I mean, that's just, that's how easy it is because it, you know, it's just so easy to pick up. And, um, and what happened is that obviously someone back in the deep past wanted to get their XNA game running on an iPhone. Mm. Yep. So they started a project called um, Mono Touch, I think it was. Mm -hmm. or was it? Was it? Yeah, I think it was, it was Mono Touch. Or XNA, no, XNA Touch, that was it. And um, and that project just kind of grew and grew and grew. And and then we've got Monogame, which is a complete implementation of XNA, but it runs on so many platforms. Um, the original XNA ran on Xbox, it ran on Windows, and it ran on Zune, for those of you who remember Zune, mm -hmm. um, and the Windows Phone as well, which is, uh, hands, you know, tip my hat to all the Windows Phone users out there. <laughs> I'm one myself, <laughs> um, and but the Mono Game takes this to a whole new level because we're on uh, Linux, we're on Mac, we're on Windows, we're on Windows UWP, uh, Windows Phone 8, a normal Windows Phone, PS4, um, Android, iOS, obviously using the Xamarin tooling, and um, and also we've just released an ounce for Switch. <laughs> as well so we're on the mm. nintendo switch nice um and the ps vita very good. so basically so, so, good. so basically xna was this amazing library um that you could make basically make xbox 360 games on that's where i was really focused on first and windows desktop 
games? Yeah, yep, basically, yeah. So, so, mono, so mono game leverages, I'm assuming, everything that we have in our .NET runtime, which is mono. So you can leverage all of your amazing C-sharp backend code, everything you love about Xamarin already, and then apply this 3D game engine on top of it, and that runs everywhere. Like, if every, I mean, sw Switch now, that's the first time I'm hearing yeah. of this, so that's kind of cool. <laughs> um, uh, PlayStation, uh, Linux, desktop, I mean, everything. So for me as a game developer, I... I what? I just create my graphics and then I, I start writing game engine logic and is it similar to Xamarin? Like do I have all the different projects or how does my project structure it, I guess? Am I in Visual Studio? Where am I? Well, yeah, I mean you're in Visual Studio um, or Xamarin Studio or even Visual Studio for Mac these days. Um, I think the plugin works there. I haven't actually tried it to be honest. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's just Visual Studio. Uh, it's it's as easy to get started as you download the installer and run it and then you do file, new project, and you pick the platform that you want to do. Um, and you, you, for, as a Xamarin developer, you'll be really at home because you'll have an Android project, you'll have an iOS project, um, you'll have a UWP project, but then you'll have these other projects like um, uh, the cross-platform desktop project, which mm. we, we call it, which uses a SDL as a back end, and that allows you to t create one binary that works on Mac, Linux, and Windows. Oh, cool. Which will let you publish on Steam, um, and various other bits and pieces. So as a Xamarin developer, you'd be completely at home with the, the kind of layout. You can use PCLs or shared projects. I'm a shared project fan myself. Same. Because it just makes it easier to use. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's exactly the same kind of choices. Obviously, we use the same kind of back end. So we use Mono on all the platforms that need Mono. And then we use .NET on all the platforms that um, like Windows and all that kind of stuff. And interestingly, we just had a guy... I was literally just on the chat room, and we just had a guy who ported Monogame to .NET Standard. Oh, or cool. .NET Core. .NET, .NET Core. Core, sorry. Yeah. 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 So, 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 so essentially, if there's a .NET runtime that can be there, usually powered by Mono, which is all open source, yeah. then, and, that, and, that, and that, that runtime, since it's our, our Mono, it'll be the latest and greatest, right? So all the .NET 4.5 features, C Sharp 6, C Sharp 7 now, yeah. I assume. So you can really yeah. leverage async await all that goodness in a Mono game game. Is that correct? Yeah, you can do. I mean, generally speaking, you try and steer away from asyncs and await stuff. You really want it to games. be 60 frames per second, probably. Yeah, because yeah, because yeah. you gotta you gotta run that thing as hard as you can to get that <laughs> get that Got frame it. rate. But um, I mean, the interesting thing with the back end is the there are platforms you may have noticed that I've mentioned that don't have a mono back end. Yeah, sure. So there's there's PS4, uh, the PS Vita, sorry, PS4 runs mono, PS Vita doesn't, and Switch doesn't. So what's happened there is the uh, the project team leader Tom Spillman he's created um, a transpiler mm -hmm. that takes IL and converts that into C++ portable C++ which we can then compile for the target platform. Got so it. what that so you still write your game in C# -sharp and, it's, and then you just do this post processing step afterwards to get your game binary and then you can put it on on the game. So and he he supports all sorts of platforms there's um, Xbox 1 the game partition, not the not the UWP um, side of things, because there's mm -hmm. two partitions on Xbox One, um, and obviously PS Vita and now Nintendo Switch. So, um, if people are interested in that, they need to reach out to Tom Spillman, and he'll get you in their beta program for their their transpiler, which I think is called Brute, okay. <laughs> <laughs> which is quite a good thing. But um, but yeah, I mean that's 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 kind of exciting as well. So with that technology, as well as all the mono stuff. You can pretty much go anywhere. We just need the the time and and the effort to port it. Got it. Yeah. So do you want to jump no one... in and, and show people where to get started? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah let's no, do it. I'm no. gonna hop over to your desktop here and and uh, let's see if I can get this up here. There we go. Cool. Yeah. So where where do we get started at? Yeah, I'm just gonna move you down the bottom. Well, the first thing you need to do is go and download the installer. So okay. um, you can go to monogame.net or monogame.rocks, <laughs> which I quite like. Um, just hit the downloads section. We did a release last week, basically, um, to coincide with the the XNA, the, the new XNA start uh, creators club thing that they Microsoft released last week. Got so there was a big thing about indie developers on the Xbox One last week, um, and we did a new release to support that. So you just go to uh, Monogame 3.6 on the download section, and there's there's all the all the all the installers you can get. So if you're in Visual Studio. Just grab the Monogame 3.6 with Visual Studio, and that's a standalone installer. That will just do everything you need to. If you're on a Mac, just grab the Mac one, 
And if you're on Linux, because we support developing on Linux as well, mm. you can grab the Linux one. There is some setup um, things you need to do on Linux, but there's there's a blog post around to help you do that. Got so um, I'm not actually going to download this stuff because I've already done it. So what we'll do is we'll just hop over to Visual Studio. Cool. Um, we'll maximize that. Are you still seeing that? Uh, maximize? There we go. Yep, we're good to go. Yep. Okay. Looks good. Okay, so we're in Visual Studio 2017. Which uh, congratulations on the team for releasing this. Was it yesterday or <laughs> yeah, was it yeah, the beginning it was of yesterday. March. Yeah, it was crazy. It yeah. was, was an awesome release. I've been using 2017 a lot on my personal machine. I really, I really, really like it. It's good stuff. Yeah, I made, I made sure I updated as soon as it came <laughs> out. So, <laughs> so you okay. So once you install it, essentially, what all gets installed? Is it? Am I installing like assemblies? Am I installing tooling? What what, what actually is, gets installed? I guess. Well, you get a whole bunch of stuff. I'll. I'll, I'll take you through what it actually installs because okay. it's kind of interesting because there'll be some developers who I'm sure um, will like to know. So we end up with um, a, a monogame installation directory mm -hmm. uh, which has all the, this has all the assemblies for all the platforms that we support oh, cool. on here. So all the Android, these are all pre-built assemblies that you can use. Um, but then we also put in the MS build system a whole bunch of um, targets, files and tooling. This is the basically the content pipeline. And I'll talk to talk about the content pipeline in a minute. Okay. But this is, this is all the tooling for compiling shaders, compiling audio, and all that kind of stuff. Um, we just put all this stuff in place, and then we put all the templates into Visual Studio. Oh, so cool. what you end up with is you can do file new project. I'm a big fan, I'm a big fan of templates. I don't know if you know. I just I love when things are done for me. <laughs> so very cool. Yeah. We, we like templates as well because it, it's um, it's a bit complicated to set up because we use a, whole, a, a lot of uh, MS Build integration. Got it. Um, there's extra properties and extra imports that you need to put into your project to get the content pr process working properly. So that's what all our templates do. Cool. So let's start with um, a very simple project. So we're going to use this cross-platform desktop project to start off with. We'll just create okay. that. Yeah, and I see inside of there you have all the other Windows platforms, iOS, Android. Everything yeah, like absolutely. that. Absolutely. Now, now you don't have to pay anything for a mono game, right? Because if you're releasing for Xamarin, you're using the Community Edition. Everything works in the Community Edition of Visual Studio, I assume. Yep, everything's free. Cool. I love it. Even the even the console ports. I mean, everything's open source. Okay. The console ports, um, say for Xbox One and, and PlayStation, they're they're open source in such that as long as you're on the the development program for that platform. Got it. Got it. So if you're Excellent. on Idea Xbox then you can get access to the Xbox um, the, the game port, as it Got were, it. for mono game. Or Got you it. can just use UWP, which is fine, which is, is completely open source. Um, so everything's open source. Everything's free. There's no charge. Even for the console ports, there's no charge. Just as long as you're on their dev platforms, then, cool. then you're fine. So, Love it. Which is pretty good. Okay, so let's create a, a, a standard project. Um, True to X, those of you who are X and A developers, you'll, mm -hmm. you'll see this and you'll recognize all this code straight away. We've got a game one. This is our main game class. So this is where we'll um, start to write all of our game. And you get, you get a whole bunch of boilerplate code just dropped in there. Now, now when, I you, think, when, you, when you say that X and A developers would be used to this, is it possible just to take your X and A code and then just dro drop it into a mono game game? Is that possible? I'm sure there's some setup, but... Yeah, I mean, the, the actual code itself, the C-sharp code, you can pretty much use as is. Because if you mm. notice, we've got the same namespaces. Mm. So it's not MonoGame yeah. framework. It's the Microsoft XNA framework. And the reason we did that was so it's just to make it really easy for people to port. Cool. Very nice. Or get over. But the interesting thing is people aren't generally porting these days. They're actually just creating games with MonoGame Right off the bat, so Makes um, sense. but if you do have, if you are an old XNA programmer, you'll you'll recognize a lot of this. This is all kind of very similar stuff. Um, so yeah, this is our game class. So um, we can just run this up, and it will just create a it will just create a screen. So and this is, and this is a that cross platform desktop. So this app would run on Windows desktop, uh, Linux, Mac, or something like that, or just Windows or yep. everywhere. Okay, no, got it. This this will run on Windows, Mac, and Linux. Cool. Nice. Um, so, That's awesome. Which is quite cool. And it, you've got all the dependencies there. So we're using SDL2 as a back end, which is SDL2 is like a low level uh, kind of gaming framework. Okay. Uh, but it provides input and windowing support in a cross platform manner. So we're leveraging yeah. that 
um, on this particular platform. It just makes things easy, but you've got all the all the binaries you need. So, I mean, that just gave me uh, an interesting blue screen. Um, let's do some changes. Let's change the size of the screen, which is uh, going to be fun. So we can set the preferred uh, height. We say, I don't know, 24, and then preferred back width is 1280. Hopefully this will work. <laughs> say is full screen equals false. We just run that up. So we're just changing the screen resolution there. Just a slightly bigger screen. I have, I'm on a retina screen, so yeah, that doesn't take up much. Yeah, <laughs> but looking good, looking good. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so the API is very similar. It's it's very easy to use. Um, but the the only difference between X and A and Mono Game is the content pipeline. Okay. We went took a slightly different route. And when you what do you uh, mean by content pipeline specifically? Okay, so um, when you first start writing games, the temptation is to just use say WAV files and PNG files directly in your game. Yeah. Um, but what you'll find is as your game gets bigger, you'll, you'll start to hit resource limits, especially on mobile. Because um, if you took a standard uh, 1024 by 1024 image, that's um, RGBA. So it's, it's, got four you know, it's got all the colors. That takes up about four meg of video memory when you load it. Got it. Um, so if you're on a limited, if you're on a platform that doesn't have a lot of video memory, you're going to be limited with the amount of graphics you can load. So what we do is we've got a content pipeline, which rather than compressing the textures or, or optimizing them on the device, we do that at build time. Oh, okay. So, nice. Nice. Yeah. So when we're targeting iOS, for example, we'll take that PNG file that you've got and we'll convert it into a, a compressed texture format that the, the, the graphics hardware on the iPhone knows how to load. Got it. Uh, the example I had, I had, I had a test image. Again, it was 1024 by 1024 RGBA image. I put that through the pipeline and the resulting image was about 500K. So I, I saved about, you know, it, it, was, it was using a quarter of the space. And that's on the GPU. Got it. And, and that's, so that's I, a lot when you have these, all these textures and everything's loading up. Yeah, you really need to be absolutely. cognizant of everything you're putting in the game. Makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. So you, 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 um, a lot of people, t they, they forget about the content pipeline, but it's really important, especially if your game gets bigger, to, to try and use the content pipeline because it's not just for graphics, it's for audio as well. We optimize the audio for the target platform. Um, same for music uh, and, and even 3D models at some point. Got it. Um, so yeah, so I always, I always try and use the content pipeline. Now in the old days, you used to have an extra project in here, which was the content pipeline, but we've um, uh, we've got this content mgcb file okay which which is basically if i just double click on that it's going to open up the um the content pipeline tool okay cool so like some additional tools for for, for your game essentially to do yeah, that so compression I, hopefully people can see that because yeah, yeah it looks good <laughs> looks good yeah, it's fine so what you do here is once you've got this tool open then you can start adding adding files so for example i can add a new item um i want to uh, create a font so I'm going to add a sprite font. Uh, and th this is a compiled font, effectively, that you can use in your game. It ends up, it ends up as a bitmap font um, rather than the standard TTF or anything. So, um, but yeah, so I'm going to create a sprite font there, which I could use. Uh, and then I'm going to chuck in, uh, I'm going to find a logo from somewhere. So let's see what we've got. Let's go in here and grab, grab that icon. I'm just going to copy that into the directory. So there we go. So I've just added uh, a font and an icon, which I can then use. I'm just going to save that. Now you don't actually have to compile. You can compile um, this stuff in the in this IDE if you want, but because of the MS Build integration, we can just go ahead and use this stuff directly. Got it. So this is just kind of so, a nice external tool that is around. You can use it with it open, with it not open, and just kind of open up that file. Uh, essentially, yep. no matter where you're at, that makes sense. Cool. Absolutely interesting. I mean, the other interesting thing is if you're a designer. So if you've if you've split your team up, so you've mm. got a, a game developer and a designer. The designer could have a build of the game, and then sit here with the tool, this tool, and they could update the images, compile it, put it into the game, and see the game without having to go to the developer and say, "Can you give me a new build?" Oh, that's nice. Very cool. Because it's just the, it's literally just the uh, these XMB files that get spit out. Oh, nice. Very cool. Um, so yeah, that's something they can do. So it's, it's quite nice having this additional tool there. 
So we just added some stuff in there. Um, and now what we want to do is actually load that. Load that. So we're going to create a, a sprite font. So we're going to call that font. And then we're going to do a texture 2D, and we're going to call that icon. So we're just declaring a font and an icon, which we've just added to the content pipeline. And I'm going to come down to um, this method called low content. And what this is, this is basically your first opportunity to load graphics or audio or any other content that your game needs. You don't have to do it here. You can do it in your update methods and your draw methods if you want. But um, generally speaking, try and do it on the load contents if you can, because um, you, you probably don't want to be loading content during an update loop. Yeah, unless, so I'd assume like anything that's kind of mission critical to get your game started would go here. And then if you're building a game that's yeah. like level oriented, you could implement some like level loading that gets loaded uh, level two, level three, level four. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, you can split your game up in any way you want, um, and then you can do uh, nice loading screens and all that kind of stuff. So uh, there are lots of X and A samples mm. um, out there, which which will just you know once you've brought the code into a monogame project, will just work. So th there's good examples of how to do that kind of stuff. Cool. Um, but for demo purposes, this is this is perfectly fine. So we're gonna. Um, load this font by using the, this content object which is available it's very similar it's exactly the same as x and a this is the content manager mm, nice it's got this um, generic load method so you give it the type that you want to load in this case i want to load a sprite font and then you give it the name of the item that you want to load and we called it font now note you don't have to put any extensions on there at all um, the content pipeline will figure that out whether it needs to load um, load the content, uh, whether it needs to load the XMB or, or what have you. So Got that's it. fine. So we'll do the same for the icon as well. So I want to load a texture, 2D, and we're going to call that icon. Oh, it's this new keyboard on my new <laughs> Mac. <laughs> so that's how easy it is to load a piece of content. Okay, cool. And then you can so display we put it. it <laughs> yeah, and then we and then we could just display. Yeah, that, that's a little bit more in, interesting, but a, again, that's it's, it's still very straightforward. I mean, yeah. that for, for loading content, that is an easy API to learn. That's You're just like, easy. I want to load this type, and this is the name of it. It's like, yeah, okay, that's fine. And I saw that so, there was like there is particles, there's textures, there's uh, sprites, there's a bunch of other different type of sprite. Con Can you use like sprite sheets too? Like if you're doing like a two D sprite game, I guess. Yeah, well, the the interesting thing about Monogame, it's it's not really, you you probably couldn't class it as an engine because it's more of a framework. It's very low level, so okay. we provide textures, render targets, uh, sprite fonts, sound, and music, Got it. and and three D models. So if you want sprite sheet support and all that kind of stuff, you either implement it yourself or go to the community because there's a community project called Monogame Extended. Hmm. And that builds on top of Monogame. It builds the APIs on top of it. So it's got uh, support for sprite sheets, um, the tiled map editor. Uh, there's, they're working on some UI stuff as well. There's, there's all sorts of nice extensions to Monogame that are built on top of this particular framework. And there, there's also other um, 3D engines and all sorts of stuff built on top of these. There's, a, there's an engine called Proto Game, I think it is, which one of the um, contributors works on, and that's a fully featured 3D engine. So Got it. Um, there are, if you do need something that's a little bit more advanced and you, you don't want to write it yourself, then go to the community, and there's lots of options out there, definitely. Very cool. Cool. So, so there we go. So we've got a font and an icon. Um, let's go and do something with that now. So being a game... Um, we're obviously trying to render at 60 frames a second. What we're going to do is we've got an update call, which we use to update our game logic, and then we've got a draw call, which we use to draw the draw the stuff. Got it. This is your, now, main, somebody this is your main game loops, essentially, that are going to be called as, yeah. as fast as humanly possible. Yeah, you might, you might be thinking, why don't we just have a, a, an update and draw method? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some people might be thinking that. Um, well, for those of you that don't know, is your update myth method can be called more often than your draw method. Yeah. Because sometimes if you're drawing something and it's getting and the GPU is getting a bit slow for for whatever reason, um, your game might lose a couple of update steps, a couple of frames. So what happens is Mono Game automatically compensates for that and will call your update multiple times to kind of catch up. 
Um, so so it's just just be careful. So you can put your update logic in the draw method if you want to. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, just just watch out for that. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we need to we need to do something. I just remembered something that I need to introduce. Um, the thing we use to draw two D stuff is called a sprite batch, and um, we declare one. We've declared one up here, which is quite cool. And what this does is is um, it's just a way of batching together draw calls, so we're not just sending stuff to the GPU willy willy nilly. Oh, um, sure. We're we're just saying basically we're gonna. This is a bunch of stuff we want to draw. We're gonna optimize it in a way that we can send to the GPU in the most efficient fashion possible. Yeah, so I'm assuming if you were to layer eight things on top of each other, you don't really need to probably even render all eight things. It probably can do some like cross intersection type stuff and then batch it down. Is that the idea? Um, well, I don't, it's, it's not that advanced in Monogame. The GPU takes care of a lot of that for you. Got it. But um, what happens is we do try and make sure that, that everything is, is sent in the right order and all that kind of stuff. Got so um, you don't necessarily have, it will draw in the order you give it, but you can override, override that if you want. Got it, cool. So I, ju I just remember that the, uh, so if you noticed in the in the low content, we create the sprite batch here. Hmm. Um, so that's that's done as part of the template. So now what we can do is we can actually use use the sprite batch to draw stuff. And what we do is we start a batch and then we can say, uh, I want to draw a string. And we're going to give it the font that we loaded earlier, and we're going to give it some text. So, uh, is it the Xamarin Show or just the Dam Xamarin the, show? the Xamarin Show? Yeah, the I was, Xamarin I was real show. creative yeah. with the title, as you can see. <laughs> it's a show about Xamarin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got the text, and now we want the position of where it's going to go. Um, got it. We've got a whole bunch of math, math classes built in. So we've got vector two, vector three, vector four. We've got all the matrices stuff. Um, so we can just put in the, the location and we want we'll, the color that we want. So we're going to use uh, monogame orange for that one. Mm -hmm. uh, for those of you I like that how, don't know. I like how monogame has its own orange color. That's great. It does. It is the color. It's the color of the logo. So we, we that, this is one departure from the XNA API because <laughs> XNA doesn't have that, unfortunately. But there we go. <laughs> <laughs> and it's an addition too, so that's good. You know what I mean? It's not a yeah, breaking yeah. change. Yeah, yeah. It, it won't break any. It won't break any existing code, which is good. So that's that's how easy it's to draw a string. Um, drawing a texture, we just use the standard draw method, and we put the icon in. And there's a whole bunch of overloads that you can use to okay, do stuff yeah. on here. It, it's it's really kind of interesting um, what you can do with this stuff. So you can change the source and destination rectangles, so you can sample from inside the texture you don't have to use all of it this is where your sprite sheets would come in got it so you could just say i want to draw this section of the texture and then you can give it a destination rectangle so it's over there and you can rotate it and scale it and do all sorts of other bits and pieces nice but in this case what we're going to do is we're just going to stick it in the in the top corner and uh, again you can you can give it like a tint so in our case mm. we want to just do white which is fine um, and then once we've done that we can just end the batch cool Okay, so what we can do, just run that up. And that font is really small. <laughs> <laughs> that's, but it's that's, there. That's, it is there, yeah. That's right there. Can you, so can you we'll scale do, it? Yeah. We, 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 can, we can either, um, we can go in and actually change the font. So let's, let's have a look at what the sprite font looks like because um, it's really easy to mess about. This is just an XML file. Oh, cool. Yeah. Nice. So you can change the font that you want to use. Hmm. Uh, you can change the size. So let's just whack that up to 48. Uh, we can make it bold or regular. You can either change the, the, the character sets. So um, by default, we just do the standard ASCII set. But then you can change. So if you're not using the, if you want to save space and you're not using the entire ASCII set, you can drop it down. Oh, nice. Um, and of stuff so it's uh, that's pretty good so if i just run that up again and you'll notice that the content pipeline has automatically picked up that that changed and compiled it and and there we go so we've got a, a, a nice nice bigger font there beautiful so now our Quite game cool. is coming together it's looking real good it's yeah uh, it's good. and then but that's cool because literally that's like six lines of code and i have a window open i'm drawing um, fonts, I'm drawing text, I'm drawing pictures, I'm drawing a background color, 
And that's actually being updated nonstop. I don't have to do anything else. Like the mono game is just doing that for me, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, obviously, we've got, um, as you can see here, if you look on line 70, we've got some input processing going on here as well. So that's that's pretty easy to do. Um, the got APIs it. are very similar. So you can just grab the current. You have to remember, if you're coming from an, um, an application developer's point of view, you're used to events yeah. kicking off time, aren't you? In games, you generally don't get events. What you get is this is the state of the system right now. Mm. So when we say gamepad get state or keybag get state, it's basically saying, give me the state of the keyboard right now or the gamepad right now. Got and it. it will tell you which keys are up or down. Um, you don't tend to get events, but then again, that's where, you know, Monogame Extended, that'll probably have an event. I think that has an event-driven system that you can hook into if you like that kind of code. But many people, they just say, just get me the state and, and I'm going to deal with the state right now. Got it. Makes sense. Yeah, and you would kick off so... Yeah, I hit the A button, so now this little this little player jumps or whatever, and that kicks off some logic loop that is running, and then it goes from there essentially. Yeah. So I mean, if you wanted to, so let's 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 do a little as as we we've mentioned it. Let's do a little uh, oh. a little thing. We're gonna say color, and we're gonna call this tint color. Okay. Uh, and we're just gonna use the tint color in there. So um, we'll default it to. Um, Color the mono game orange, but then what we'll do is we're just going to say if um, keyboard get state player index one, so you can get different different mm. players as well, which is nice. quite cool. Um, is key down keys, so we'll go with spacebar for now. Um, actually, I'm not going to use an if because if are so last, you know, last century. <laughs> there you go. We're going to use it. You're going to do this properly, man. So if it's down, we want to make it, I don't know, black. Otherwise, we're going to default to um, monogame orange. Okay, so the idea now is that when I place the space bar, the, the tint color on the text is going gonna, is gonna to change. Got it. Cool. Well, yeah, there we go. There you go. Nice. Very cool. Yeah, and that, that makes a lot of sense because and now yeah, you know, your draw, so you get the update, then you draw, and then it loops, 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 and it's always constantly updating. Very yep, cool. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. So, and obviously you can do the same thing for um, the mouse input, the touch panel input, and and all sorts of other stuff. Very cool. So it's it's it's, it's pretty good. It's very easy to use. Um, I do actually have another demo that's slightly more involved in this one. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah, okay. A little bit more than text in an image. I like that. I want to see. Like, yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's the file new experience. So that's actually really nice. I mean, it's really easy to kind of get started and do some stuff, which which I really like about about Mono Game. And I know C Sharp says all looks very familiar to me. I'm not learning new languages. I just kind of have to understand. I have to change. It seems like I have to change that state of mind of oh, I was developing apps before, and now I'm developing games. So I got to realize that. Oh, it's got to be super performant. We always want our apps to be super performant, but it's always running and it's looping, it's looping, and there's more work being on the GPU, essentially. Yeah. Got it. Cool. Yeah, basically. Cool. So Let's see what you this got. this demo is um, is slightly different. I've got a, a nice, slightly different project structure over here because this is how I would uh, put a project together if I was developing a game. So I've got a shared project here, um, which has my game code in it. Um, and I've got my content pipeline in there as well. Okay. Um, but then I've got all these all these other projects. So there's the desktop project there, uh, and there's the iOS project. And all these do is they just reference the shared project that I've got. Perfect. So if you're a Xamarin developer, um, this is this is a normal thing to do. So this is you know even the TVOS one there that that's that's using the the shared project as oh, well. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Put 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 your games so, on the TV, right? Wow. Yeah, I mean, we've got, there's a game already using TVOS, uh, Supergiant, they've, they've got a game called Transistor, which is on TVOS, mm -hmm. I think. Um, they use a really old fork of, of Mono Game, but, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's just shows how, how, well, I wouldn't say it's not necessarily easy when you've got a game that big, <laughs> but, um, but it's all doable. It's, it's all, all doable. within reach. It's all within reach, yeah. You just have to have the, uh, you know, the time and effort to do it. Yeah. So, um so yeah, so I've I've got a share project and I'm using that code um, through all the other all the other um, all the other platforms that we've got there. Uh, there's very little 
we do have some um, hash defines or if defs here. Hash ifs. There's not many of those. There's one. For like key, which key around, state, it looks like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, which is all down to do the... This is to do with the exiting the app because tvOS and iOS, there's no concept of exit, exiting the app. Got it. Um, the the operating system will decide or the user will decide when to kill it. So it's 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 not really down to you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, yeah. Yeah, and as a result of that, we we've actually raised that will if you have that the exit statement in an iOS or tvOS app, um, if you try and use the exit statement, it will generate a compiler error, oh, uh, God. telling you that's that's not supported on these platforms. And we did that for good reason because you know people were saying I, I'm trying to exit and it's not working, but mm. it's just like yeah, you just can't do it. So let the yeah, operating system do it. Cool. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the content we've got in this one very quickly. Um, so we've got a couple of bitmaps, we've got the font, we've got a WAV file there for some audio, and we've got a couple of FBX files. Uh, these are 3D models. Oh, okay, gotcha. Are they, they come from, oh man, I'm going to date myself because I, I, I used like 3DS Max back in the day. Are they like DirectX models? Are they something specific? What kind of models do, does Monogame support? Um, well, F FBX is, we, we support um, all sorts of models. FBX is the one that we, we officially support, but we Got do it. use the um, Open Asset Importer, I think it is. Mm. There's a, there's a cross-platform open source model importer that we use as part of our, pipe, part of our pipeline. So you should be able to use an OBJ file, uh, 3DS file, uh, Max files possibly even. Cool. Uh, but generally, we tend to use the FBX uh, file format if we can. Cool. Um, it has to be the newer XB FBX format. If you if you're grabbing a model from an old XNA sample, you generally have to upgrade it to the latest version of FBX, um, which is what I've done here. So if you if you've used a 3D model from one of the XNA samples, you'll recognize what you might recognize this ship. Got it. Okay. You might you might not. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so you can do models and you can do all sorts of stuff here. You can change oh, nice. the um, all these properties so you can change the, the texture format whether you want to do uh, mip maps or not um, and whether you want to rotate the model in a particular way and all of that happens during the build process uh, okay. and the same with all these things we can change the like the key color if you're going to use uh, color key transparency um, whether you're going to uh, resize the power of two and all sorts of other bits and pieces so but yeah so we've got all the uh, that's all that's all the content that we've got there so now we need to load and, and use some of that stuff so once again we just start at the top and we'll work our way down sure so we've got a sprite batch as before we've got a texture and a font which is fine um we've got a wav file that we want to use so we just declare a sound effect um which is good there's also another class called a sound effect instance which has slightly more control so the sound effect is basically a fire and forget so got there's it. a play method on it and you say Sound effect play and it just plays. Whereas a sound effect instance, you can do things like change the pitch uh, mm. and, and stop and start it. And so, if you want more control, sound effect instance is the one you want to go cool. go with. Um, we've got this model here, which we're going to use to to load a model, and then we're declaring uh, a vector three, which is going to be our our camera position in three D space. I'm not a three D expert. Just <laughs> warning you about that. So. <laughs> If you ask me how any of this matrix multiplication works when we get further down the code, um, I'll refer you to the internet. There you go, yeah. Look up, look up Matrix Max. Go take a course real quick, yeah. yeah. I'd, have to, I'd yeah. have to do a refresher myself. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah it's been a while, quite, quite a while for me. Um, so, yeah, as, as before, in the, in the previous sample, we're just creating our graphics device manager, which is um, how we set our properties. Um, We've got this new thing, which is the orientations that we support. Mm. So if you're supporting a device that um, you can rotate, like iOS or, or a mobile, any kind of mobile device, you can define which, which modes you support. So if you just got a landscape game, you can lock that in. Got it. Right, yeah. Um, in this case, we don't care, so we're just supporting all of them, which is fine. Um, and then we've got some other stuff there. We do have a, what we call a touch panel which people can use to, um, to detect touch on mobile devices. Um, and we've got limited support for a, a small number of, well, basic gestures. So you can pick up these kind of gestures. So a double tap, a tap, horizontal and vertical drags and all that kind of stuff. So cool. if you've got some stuff you want to do with that kind of gesture, that supports in there as well. Nice. Um, content load. 
very very simple yep just like we did before i want to load a model this is the name of the model i want to load <laughs> and away you go, and away you go. Um, same with sound effect all that kind of stuff and this is where we get into the the input stuff that we're talking about so this is the oh, update cool. method so i'm grabbing the state of the keyboard and the gamepad and the touch and the touch panel and then based on the values um we're going to decide what we're going to do. So we're going to the red side if we want to rotate the model left or right. So we check to see if the keyboard is down. If so, we go left. Um, we've also got gamepad in there. So if if the thumbstick is like moved to the move to the left, we're going to rotate to the left. Got it. And, and so we do the same for you know the right key. And if we've got the space key or they press the uh, the A button on the bar, we're going to hit the we're going to fire that sound off. We're going to play the sound. Nice which is cool. Um, and then obviously we've got the touch state. So here we're just looping through any, because every what you get, you get an array of all the points that have been touched. So if you can, if someone puts more than one finger down, you can deal with all that here. Got um, it. So if you're on the left side of the screen, on the right side of the screen, yep. as long as it's down, we're going to rotate. Got it. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. So that's what that's doing. And then th this is going through the gesture stuff. So if we've got a gesture available, um, we'll just, because this is like a stack of gestures, because mm. you want to process them in order. Um, this API came out of the Windows Phone thing, so it's it might look a bit a bit strange, but it, it works really nicely. So we just say, while we've got a gesture available, grab the gesture, and in our case, if it's a double tap, we're going to hit fire. Got it. We're going to cool. play fire. Yeah, so if you're, if you're holding down while it's holding down, do this stuff. Yeah, basically. Yep. So that's fine. And then we've got some math going on here. Um, to rotate the model and then we've got a little thing that we're going to rotate the icon by cool. uh, which is fine so uh, the interesting thing we, what i generally recommend to people is with the update and draw methods you get this game time object passed in and that gives you some interesting properties it gives you the elapsed time which is how much time has passed since the last frame oh okay got it so instead of, um, if you're going to move an object, instead of moving it by one pixel every frame, what you can do is say, I want to move it by this amount, but I want to multiply that by the amount of time that actually elapsed. And what you end up with is a smoother, it's a, it smooths out the, the movement. So that way if because, your game dips a little bit, right, it will yeah. be able to recover. That makes sense, yeah. Yeah, so it's um, it's always if you can use the elapsed time. There, there's also a total time that the game is running. Got it. And I don't know if you remember last time I told you about um, the, when sometimes one game will call the update method more than once. Mm. Um, if you get into if it's running slowly, if you get into that situation, you will see this is running slowly. Flag will get set. Got it. Um, and what you can do there, which is even I've seen people do this, is um, when the is is running slowly thing is is true, they skip a lot of game logic. Yeah, got to get through the game logic as fast as possible, and then yeah, because yeah. you don't need it. Yeah, makes sense. Cool. Yeah, I, I don't really need to, to do that. You know, I, I don't really need to update the animation for the UI this frame. Got it. Let's let's leave that. And, and yeah, so you can do that kind of stuff. Cool. So yeah, use the game time if you can. Um, and then we come to the draw method, um, and you'll see down the here, down the bottom here, we've got the same stuff. We've got um, draw string, which we looked at earlier which is going to draw some text. Um, and then we've got draw, uh, which is going to draw the icon, which is cool. Um, and then we've got this whole bunch of code here. Yeah, I see a lot, is... of, I see a lot of code up in there, yep. <laughs> yeah, this is all for drawing the 3D model. Ah, okay, gotcha. It's a little bit more in there to do that. Yeah, because there's obviously some, you need to do some maths involved. So um, we create a, a, a projection matrix, which is how which is how we basically project the the... A 3D model onto the screen. Got it. I think that's right. Um, and then we've got a view matrix, which is uh, kind of if you think about that, is uh, the the camera position is where you're you, you see you're standing there with your your SLR camera or your digital or your iPhone, and the the view is the the kind of field of view that you get out from your iPhone to the scene. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that's and it, it defines where you are and which way is up. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Cool. So, so we know. Yeah, it's it, like I say. If you want all, all the maths 
just I'm sure there's <laughs> sites on the internet to do yes, all that. Yes, and some documentation, stuff. take a look at some <laughs> samples. We'll put them in the show notes, right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Um, and then basically we just uh, you don't have to worry about this transform stuff. That's that's the handle if you've got animations in your model. Hmm. But then every model is made up of meshes, so we just loop through each mesh. Um, each mesh has a uh, a shader associated with it. In Monogame, we call those effects. Um, and then for each effect, we then go and uh, draw the draw the draw the mesh basically. But we need to apply these like the view and the projection and the world matrix. Um, so, like I said, the view and projection we've already talked about. The world matrix is where that model is in the game world. Got it. Got it. So, um, in this case, it's, it's basically at zero zero zero, which is the center of the game world. But we're creating some rotation around X and Y uh, to make things look nice, cool. basically. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, that's that's basically drawing a three D model. So if I just run that up. Um, we'll see this on the on the screen, and that's our three D model. Mm, cool, nice. Just quite nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, responding to input, doing rotation, yeah. um, and putting all those meshes in there. Very nice. Yeah. So if I just change, I just change the x rotation a little bit, and okay. you can see it's at a slightly more ang you know, steeper angle now. Got it. Cool. Just fine. So, so that's quite cool. And the interesting thing is, apart from that one hash define, we can actually get this to run um, on. We'll, we'll run it on the iOS. So cool. let's just see if I can get over to my. I'm hoping this is going to run up on my simulator. Let's drop out of full screen mode. There we go. Cool. And pull up the simulator. And you do the same if you wanted to put it on Android or TVOS. It's just like any other application development. It's it's just that that, that one logic and the, everything else has been scaffolded for you essentially. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Nice. So we, we take care of the hard work of of, of all the platform abstractions, um, and we've just got this one really nice API that um, that you can use to to write your games with. Nice with the simulator spin up. Everyone's favorite part of I iOS 10.2 simulator. This is a long load time. <laughs> yeah. Well, that wasn't that bad. So there you go. So oh, that's cool. the exact same code. Very cool. And you would probably put some logic in there based if you were on phone or if you were on um, desktop based on how you want to do uh, yep. like landscape versus portrait. You can put that all pragmatically like you saw up top essentially of the of how big the screen is and things like that and it, it handles the scaling because I mean that's a very different resolution on an iPhone versus on desktop and mono game handles all that for you well the the, the resolution side of things you, you sometimes have to um, deal with it yourself because uh, mono game will only take you so far got it um, I've done I've done an interesting blog blog post I've done a couple of them actually on how to deal with different resolutions on devices oh cool uh, nice in such a way that you can take into account, you can do the letterboxing, so um, you know it will scale to the screen and all that kind of stuff, yeah. which is quite good. So just to just to kind of finish off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new project here, oh, cool. um, just to see, just to show how easy it is to just port to another um, another platform. So what we're going to do is we're just going to use the Windows 10 Universal platform. So we're going to call this uh, Develop UWP. Yeah, because often you might just release first on one platform and then make sure that's super tested and then go to another platform. It's kind of like, I know a lot of yeah. game devs do it. It's hard to launch simultaneously and let alone just mobile, then desktop and Steam and all these other you know platforms that are out there. So. Yeah, so um, so you're going you're gonna to get this situation. So we've created the project. Ignore all the errors. That's just standard with a UWP project. <laughs> This is what happens. So what we've got now is we've got a basic um, a template. So we need to get rid of the stuff that we don't need in this in this project, so got we can it. use our shared project. So the first thing we're going to do is get rid of our content MGCB because I'm going to reuse the one from the shared project. So I don't need that. I'm going to get rid of game one because that's just the, the template game one. Yep. So I don't need that. Um, and now I just need to add a reference to my shared project. And hopefully we'll set that and it will build. 
Although it's probably going to download some stuff from the internet. Get all those nougats, all those new jays. Yeah. <laughs> new jays. Got to have them. Now, the, the really nice thing that I like about UWP is, have, have you got an Xbox One at home? I do. I do have an Xbox do. One, yeah. Yeah, do you know you can turn it into a dev kit? I've heard I've heard that they finally enabled that and I've seen a bunch of games and kind of and games and apps even. Uh, I think yeah. some people even published some Xamarin Forms apps uh, on there cuz it's a UWP app, right? So Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's just normal. But but you can actually um, if you go and activate your Xbox One as a dev kit, hmm. um, then when you reboot into it, you can actually the UWP app that I just got here, I could run that on my Xbox One. Oh, cool. Does it come up as a target in Visual Studio? Like, oh, deploy to Xbox. Well, cool. what you do is, well, I'll just run this up so show okay. that actually worked. Ah, right, okay. I know what that is. A little configuration manager. Configuration manager. Everyone's best friend. Yeah, we love you. So the, um, this is just a standard UWP app. So uh, we, we've done some nice stuff to, to get it all working. I didn't try this before the show, so I'm surprised it didn't crash. <laughs> and it works. And it wow. works. So there we go. Nice. Which is fine. Which is cool. So if I wanted to deploy that to my Xbox One, um, what I'd do is I'd come in here and I'd say remote machine. Ah. And what would happen is, what you need to do is you, you enable your Xbox One as a dev kit. Okay. Make sure it's on a wired connection because it doesn't work over Wi-Fi. Sure. So the Xbox One has to be on a wired connection. Your laptop doesn't. Um, and then it will appear in your list of, of devices here. You can just select it and then run. Cool. Awesome. And it will just, and it will just deploy it, and then you can sit on your sofa with your, with your controller and, and play again. Very cool. Now, yeah. so that's pretty awesome. Uh, these samples, uh, are there a bunch of samples on the Mono Game website to get started or, or some other documentation that people can go to? Uh, well, generally, <laughs> the, the, the samples-wise, we're still trying to work on our samples because obviously it's a community project. Yep. Um, people have limited time, so we're trying to get the samples. What I will do, though, is I will um, push this developed solution that I've got here. I'll push that to GitHub. Um, either tonight, and then we'll uh, uh, and we'll get that up so it's uh, in the show notes, so people yep. can just download it and have a play. Totally. Um, and yeah, documentation-wise, there is there are doc is documentation on monogame.net. So if we head back to that, uh, we've got a documentation documentation section there. Cool. It's a work in um, progress, but it's there. It, <laughs> yeah, it's a work in progress. Um, we've got a link to a whole links to a whole bunch of tutorials that the community have done. Note some of these will probably be out of date um, because the, the content pipeline, for example, is recent. That's that's only been in there for about a year. Got I it. think we first announced it um, at Evolve, not last Evolve, but the one before. Got it. Um, so some of these will, might be a little bit out of date because it, it used to be a real pain to, pain to use because you had to build the XMB files yourself and then link them in your project manually. Got it. But now we've just taken care of all of that for you. So, but um, but yeah, I mean, there's a whole bunch of um, there's a whole bunch of tutorials there, and there's there's notes on the tools and using the content pipeline, all kinds of other stuff. Now, if you want to learn the API, all the XNA documentation is still available. Oh, so it's yeah, it's still stuff, right? It's the same stuff. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So if you if you go to Google, right? Let's let's just go to Google and we say XNA documentation, and we can just go. Yeah, is that going to be that one? It's X and A4 you want to look at. And here we go. I mean, this is oh, a cool. good place to start. Got it. You know, that makes sense. So yeah, after the here. scaffolding, which is mostly created, all the X and A, since it's the same API, applies. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The only difference, like I said, is managing your content. So in, yeah. in the, the X and A, it will say, oh, you need to add this to the content project. Got it. So what you need to do is, in your mind, convert that into our content project. But everything else is exactly the same. So if we just um, look at uh, very quickly, Let's have a look at see what this one, your first game. <laughs> it's just installing the software. Oh, look, see? My Texture 2D. Loading the texture in load content. Nice. This is based. I could have just given you the documentation, James, for the show, couldn't I? <laughs> Probably could have. <laughs> Probably could have. Very cool. That's nice. I mean, that that's really nice that even that, you know, when you're looking for mono game documentation, it's going to be very similar. Now, mono game has been around for a long time. 
And there's been a bunch of games that have been published that people know. You, you mentioned Transistor. Um, yep. I know Bash. I know uh, Matt Makes Games. Uh, Towerfall, for instance, uh, which I'm a huge fan of Towerfall, uh, is on tons of different platforms, uh, which is awesome. Uh, and I know uh, I did a Kickstarter for the guys that did The Incredible Baron, uh, and they're coming out with a new game. I keep, every time I always go and I was like, hey, you know, is it hashtag built with mono game? And I always like to follow that hashtag because it's always a bunch of cool stuff. Are there any um, any other games you want to highlight that you know that have been made with mono? Well, and obviously, Infinite Flight and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, Infinite but. Flight, that's one of my favorites. That is. Um, that's a flight simulator that runs on mobile. A fully featured multiplayer 3D flight simulator that runs on mobile. I mean, if, if someone actually dreamt that up as a Kickstarter project five years ago, people said you're nuts. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way you could do that one. Um, but yeah, that's a really, really good one. Um, obviously, Tower 4, uh, Bastion's another one that, that's used mono games, especially on iOS. Um, Skulls of the Shogun is another favorite. Oh, yeah. Axiom, Axiom Verge. That's, that's on. Uh, that's that's come out recently. Uh, there's Stardew Valley. Oh, that's a mono game game. Uh, that's a mono game game. Oh my yeah. goodness, that's yeah, that awesome! Is. Big fan They've of just... Stardew Valley. So well, you're good. gonna get really excited now because they they announced last week that they're gonna come out on Switch. Oh, I can't wait! It's gonna there, go, <laughs> there goes all my weekends. Besides Zelda, it's all Stardew. All so good. Awesome. Yeah, so, I mean, it's just there's just loads of games. Um, there's a lot of high-profile ones, but if you follow the mon the um, at Mono Game Team Twitter account, mm -hmm. uh, they we do we because we're a community project, we do our best to support the developers that are using it. So um, if people hashtag built with Mono Game or just hashtag Mono Game in in a tweet, we'll retweet them, um, and we like to hear from the community to say, yeah, this is what we've done, because um, you know we're we're only here because of the community that uses us. So if no one used it. It'd be like three blokes in a room. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. This has been so awesome. I'm going to put a bunch of the um, links in the show notes. Dean, thank you so much for coming on to the Xamarin Show and hey, talking about Mono Game. I'd yeah, we'll love to have you back. New releases, everything like that. I want you back on and talk about that goodness. Uh, but thanks again. All the way, I know it's probably late over there in the UK, so go get some rest. Um, <laughs> awesome. I appreciate it again. Until next time, I'm James Montemagno, and this has been the Xamarin Show. <laughs>